Hi, welcome back Well2 family. Today we're gonna to be showing you guys hard facing with TIG and stick. And uh, Bob here is gonna be helping us out. You got a lesson in chemistry going on tonight? Yeah, a little bit. Old school stuff? Get my boy, Blue! Old school stuff, we got some uh, Studite 6 and we got some Stellite 6 here. That's an interesting chemistry. Yes. I always got to look that stuff up there. Uh, so typical application on this is, uh, is, is what? You know, it's used a lot like inside of uh, pump casings for cavitation, okay. you know, uh, you know, kind of like wear pads for buckets, machinery, uh -huh. you know, any application that's really abrasive. Uh, is, this, uh, is this one that you put down in a pattern? Like if you're gonna do this on a bucket, is this the is this the one that they put it down on X's and all that stuff? Yeah, that's the one that you know they'll do little swirls like a maze and all kinds of that stuff. Those are, those are fun. When they do that, is that using is that using the medium that they're digging in that's wearing out their bucket? Is that is that what they're doing? Is packing that in that X and that pattern and that swirl and all that? So that the, if you're digging in clay and sand, you want that to pack inside those patterns? Is that what the, is that what they're doing with it? Uh, I don't think that's the. Just say yes. Yeah. I just write it. I'm joking. <laughs> I've looked some of this stuff up, you know, I'm, I'm looking at some of these alloys and I'm going, wow, I'm scared to weld that. That's crazy. You know, look up at cobalt, tungsten, and all this hard stuff. Uh, well, we're going to run some stick first, or we're going to TIG first, or how are, we gonna, how are we going to check this? Yeah, I got a file right here, <clears throat> you know, Okay. that'll kind of give us an idea of how hard it is. You know, this is already hardened steel. You know, this should tear it very easily into our plate here. Oh yeah, it dug right in. Dug right in. So. If this is done correctly, you know, and it's got the right chemistry. That'll just kind of float over the top of it. And it yeah. won't, the file won't bite into the, into the hard facing? It shouldn't. Okay. Well, let's do some. I'm curious to see this. All right, so Bob's going to be running uh, this cobalt chrome rod, Studite 6. You can see it's got a weird, you know, different kind of flux on it. Green flux. Green flux is really fine. I mean, it feels super smooth in my hand. Do you see uh, EP? Is it is it electropositive? Electropositive. Okay. Uh, we got the machine set at 125 amps, and we have it set at the 7018 setting. That's where I've kind of noticed it, it behaves better for me. Don't want, don't want to dig with it. No, we don't want to dig. We want uh, to. So you haven't run this out of position or anything? Have you just? You mean you run it flat? Uh, have run it out of position. It it does okay, you know, vertically, horizontally, but it does tend to kind of you know, dig and get a little hot. Uh, so we're gonna we go around this and do a X. Yeah. But we don't want to fabricate a bucket out of super hard material. I mean, number one, it'd be really expensive. Number two, it'd be hard to work with. So we form it out of plain mild steel or carbon steel or whatever of an alloy, and then we layer it with the goodies. The goodies. Put the goodies on there to yeah, make it effective. Make it last a lot longer too. Yeah. Which one uh, Which one am I going on? Do you matter? Does it, it does, matter? It don't matter. Okay. It's pretty So I, do I want to run this, uh, I don't want to run extreme angles and lay it down or anything like that. I just want to keep the normal, like I was running low hydrogen electrodes, 10, 15 degrees. 10, 15 degrees. Drag. Drag. Okay. Nice hood, by the way. <laughs> I can no longer see your scribe line. I want to turn the corner, but I don't know where it's at. Oh, I came right to it. Right to it. I was going to turn the corner and keep going, keep the rod going. What's the restrike? Very. Is it, like, is it yeah. easier than 718, some of the 718s? Yeah, it's very similar. You got to get that little, you know, uh, crust Ooh, on the end. Stays hot a long time. Yeah, it's, uh -huh. really, it's really hot. What's the, what's the phosgene green out here? That's pretty impressive, isn't it? It's a turquoise color. It's a turquoise color. It fills up. It's got a weird. That's just plain stubbornness right there, trying to get to that corner with, I didn't mean to do that to that electrode holder. Pretty color. Really pretty color. Got a good height on that build up too. Yeah. It does, I mean, it looks like it's laying down a lot better now, but it does, it does have a nice crown to it. I think I missed my line substantially. How about that? Yeah, I think it moved a little bit. That line moved, didn't it? Kind 
kind of going for that max build right there. Touching the plate occasionally to see what it I'm pretty impressed. I mean, I, this stuff just kind of butters in, no yeah. matter how no matter how you run it. It doesn't snap hard. What do you have the? Uh, you said you had it for 7018. Yeah, I have the machine set at 7018, and I have it actually very soft. That's good. Can you go any softer? Uh, no, I have it maxed out on the soft right now. Do you want to try it on the stiff? Yeah, let's see what it looks like. What do you think would happen? A little fatter? Uh. I think it's probably going to crown a lot more because it's going to solidify a lot faster. Okay. That's stiff. You know, instead of getting a nice, you know, 7018 looking mm -hmm. bead, I think we're going to get a real tall, tall, cold looking bead, even though we haven't changed amperage. It's got a different tone to it. Subtle. It's got more of a snap. Don't you think? I think it's, uh, it sounds a little bit better. I don't hear it trying to kind of cut out as much. What are you feeling, Bob? I, it just, it's a subtle tone thing. I don't see it running a whole lot different. Down here at the end of the rod where it's heated up. I got my hands in a bad spot here, but. The logistics of putting down a stick rod, portable. I haven't even. I don't even know what this stuff costs. Is it, is it super pricey or is it yeah, it's within little, reason? It's a little more on the pricey side, but you know, this is a little, a little bit, a lot more affordable actually than than this stuff over here. You know, this is a little bit harder to find. And the TIG. The TIG, yeah. Now this, you're going to need to take a bottle with you if you're going to try to do this. So, you know, that this is more for like precision hard facing. You know, like where you got like wear pins that'll wear out, stuff like that. I think you'll be able to put this in there a little easier and, you know, not have to machine as much, get the clearance for it. All right, so, you know, Bob did his pattern here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy exactly what he did, but I'm gonna be using TIG. You know, I got my machine set at 175 amps. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the walking the cup technique. But it, it, the puddle behaves very well. You know, very similar to you know a normal carbon steel puddle. Burns really clean. Looks like it stacks up really well. Well, looks really clean. Got a good color to it. Go ahead and you know continue our pattern here. You know, if you were overlaying a bucket, this would probably be like very tedious process. You know, this might be helpful for like repairs in a pump case or something like that where you need a lot of precision. You know, I am using a 1 8 filter rod just like Bob was. One noticeable difference I can see while walking the, the cup on it, I can really feel the ridges of the bead itself. You know, my cup's kind of wanting to skate on the top of them. But otherwise the puddle behaves, you know, pretty normal. Oh, that's cool. Not only do you have the iridescent colors in there, it's got like a skin where it's solidified. That is slick. Why oh, you got a weld better than me? Show me up like that, man. It's TIG, man. I, I know, it's good. Oh, uh, that's interesting stuff. So what did that look like when you were welding it? Did it, did it like butter in or did it? You know, it flows really nice. kind of float in there nice? It, it kind of behaves very similar to a carbon steel puddle. You know, you just it, make a nice smooth walk. The wire looks dirty on the outside. It's, apparently it's not. I mean, it's still welds. Yeah, well, 
Yeah, very brittle. You know, very brittle, very hard. Wow. You can't bend this. It just snaps. Uh, so we're gonna let this cool off again. Do the file test on it. Yeah, once it cools off, you know, we can uh, check it with a file and and see how hard it really is versus you know the base material, which is you know just a regular carbon steel plate. Hey, I appreciate your time, man. That was fun stuff. Hey, that was fun, man. Enjoyed meeting you. Yeah, we got to do this again sometime. I know we, we got to build something. So there you have it, guys. You know, we showed you two different uh, methods of hard facing. You know, stick and TIG. Hope you guys enjoy it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys in the next one. Tip the camera guy.